welcome to Real Life Cooking. I'm Chef Lean. Uh, we're just about to get all of our technological devices set up here. So here you are on Facebook, welcome. Let's go ahead and get Instagram. You can watch Real Life Cooking on Instagram and Facebook Live. In a day and age where everyone is going live now, you know, uh, I'm one of the original live streamers. Uh, we make a meal from start to finish. So let me go on back here. Welcome to Real Life Cooking, I'm Chef Lean, and today we are gonna be making shrimp and grits. So in this show, you can actually cook along. I released a grocery list beforehand. Um, it's on my Instagram feed. Uh, I also have a newsletter that you can sign up for on www.cheflean.com. Um, and so you can gather the groceries and follow along step by step. There's no TV magic here. Everything is made in real time, so you should be able to cook at home. And of course, everyone is cooking at home right now because of the current climate with the coronavirus and we've all gone out and bought all these groceries are like literally our cabinets are packed and packed full of stuff so there's no better time than the present to start getting ready cooking um unfortunately because you know we're practicing safe self what is it self-isolation tt lyle my normal technological guru is not able to make it today but we have an amazing stand-in we have my fiance christopher on the ones and twos so the other amazing cool thing about this this show is that you can type in your questions below any culinary question about what I'm making or just anything else and he will relay your comments and questions to me so let's go ahead and get started let's just talk a few things about equipment because I know there are a few people cooking along today um, so you're gonna need a saucepan and you're going to need a like skillet or frying pan or something like this um, and oh also a sheet tray if you have the baby tomatoes so because of the current climate and I know like we have tons and tons of food at our house it's not all fresh like normally I use like different fresh ingredients but I'm gonna try to use pantry ingredients more so so on my grocery list these days I will give you two different options I'll give you the things you need that are essential to make the dish like clearly you can't make shrimp and grits without any shrimp although I might have someone cooking along making it with sausage um, and then I'll give you a list of optional ingredients if you are able to go to the store and grab them some of these fresh ingredients It kind of makes it a, just a little better not I mean, you know either or um, but yeah So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we have our equipment our skillet and our saucepan um, We have a cutting board in front of us. I hope a sharp knife uh, a bench scraper is always helpful um, if you don't have one, it's okay, but it really helps when we're moving things from place to place. And a dish towel you wanna have. Oh, the other thing you wanna have close near you is a trash can, because you don't wanna have to walk back and forth, and unless that's how you're getting your exercise these days, you know. But keep a trash can or trash bowl near you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So again, this is from start to finish, no TV magic. So I went ahead and left my shrimp um, frozen, just to show you it's very, very easy to defrost shrimp. I'm simply just going to put them under the sink and let water run over them for a little bit. So let me get those started over here. And I'm not, I'm not using hot water because hot water will start to cook the shrimp. Um, I'm using like cold water and they'll, they'll defrost very, very quickly. Do we have a question, Chris? Yes. Question? Yes. Uh, are you going to wear the ring the whole time? Am I going to wear the ring the whole time? Um, maybe let's see how messy this gets <laughs> i normally don't cook with my ring um but this is not this is a very very simple dish once we get started you'll see how easy it is um we often think of shrimp and grits as like this complicated thing something we only order out but it's really easy to make in your house so the next thing that i want to do um is get my water boiling for my grits so i'm going to shocking guys i'm going to measure some, something today um, when you're making grits, you want to have a four to one ratio liquid to water, and you always want to have extra liquid on hand because you're probably going to need it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this up with two cups of water. And I'm going to put it in my skillet, or not in my skillet, in my saucepan. I'm gonna be making about a cup of grits, so I'll need four cups of water, but I'm not only going to use just water. Remember, whenever you're boiling some things in liquid, you're adding flavor, you have an opportunity to add flavor. So I'm also going to use some, um, I'm gonna use three cups of water and one cup of heavy cream. You can use milk, you can use chicken stock, you can use seafood stock, you can just use water if you want. Um, just make sure that you are really, really seasoning your water with a lot of, salt or a good amount of salt at least 
All right, so let me get my last cup of water over here. All right, so we have three cups of water getting to a boil, and I'm going to put in a cup of heavy cream. Again, you can use water, you can use chicken stock, seafood stock, you can use milk, you can use cream, you can use a dairy-free milk even if you want it. Um, I have a lot of success with hemp milk as a dairy-free milk. Um, almond milk is good, oat milk, but oat milk won't really add that creaminess that we have, that we want in our grits. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that started over here. All right, if you are just joining us, welcome to Real Life Cooking with Chef Lean. Today we're making shrimp and grits. Um, you can cook at home alone, home alone, <laughs> if you are home alone, a lot of us are right now. And if you have any culinary questions at all, simply drop them in the box below and Christopher, my lovely fiance, will relay them to me. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started on our sauce for our shrimp. Actually, so one of the optional ingredients that I told you guys about were whole baby tomatoes. Um, now this is completely optional, so if you don't have them, do not fret. But I think this adds a nice depth of flavor to this dish. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and roast them. I always line my baking sheet with aluminum foil or parchment because um, I don't like cleaning up that much. I don't like scrubbing. Questions? Beth asks, so boil three cups of water and one cup of milk? Yes. In the same pot? Yes, in the same pot. You're gonna put your milk or your water and whatever other liquid you're using in the same pot and boil it together. And if you wanted your grits to be more creamy, you could use two cups of milk. It's really like, cooking is so fluid. You can really, you're cooking for yourself. Really, you're really cooking for yourself now. So just make it taste good to you. All right, so with my baby tomatoes, I'm gonna roast these while I start getting on my other parts of my sauce. So what I like to do when I'm roasting uh, baby tomatoes, I don't even slice them because as they roast, they're gonna shrink down and I want like a, some nice pieces in there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil a little bit of salt, and I think my shrimp just fell over in the sink. Mm. Oh no, they didn't fall over. <laughs> All good here. And then I'm gonna put some pepper and some garlic powder. Secret to roasting vegetables. This is like the number one secret to roasting vegetables. Garlic powder is your friend. I like, I mean, using real garlic is great too, but I love the convenience of garlic powder. You just shake it out. You don't have to cut, chop, peel, anything. And it adds a nice flavor. And also, I've noticed that garlic powder really helps brown your roasted vegetables. So I'm just gonna shake them around on my tray, just like so. And we talked about a lot of this when we're searing things in pans. Um, we wanna make sure that we leave enough space on our sheet tray, we're not crowding it all together, so that they have room to breathe and actually get caramely and roasty. So I'm gonna put them in my oven at 400 degrees. I say that 400 degrees. I say that with a grain of salt because my oven is never the temperature that it says it is. I actually have an oven thermometer, but I have my oven on like 500 and it's probably at like 350. All right, so we have our, our we have our liquid boiling for our grits. We have our tomatoes roasting for our sauce. It's gonna be an addition at the end. Let's go ahead and get started with our onion. So there's a lot of variations on shrimp and grits. Um, some sauces are not red, some sauces are like more brown colored, um, some sauces have celery and like bell peppers. I'm going to keep it super, super simple. Um, we're just going to use basically onions and tomatoes for our sauce. So I already had a half an onion from earlier, um, so I just cut it. You can, always want to keep the root end intact, can you guys see there, the root end intact. And then all the layers are cut. Now to cut the onion into nice, we want a nice dice. I want to run my knife through horizontally. Also, this is a great time for a holding a knife lesson. I see so many people holding their knife like this and chopping like this. This is how you stab someone. We might need this later if this coronavirus keeps going on. But um, when you're cutting something, you want to put your thumb right here on top of your knife and hold your knife like this. So like this, and then I'll rotate it. Although this is a little different because I'm going to run my knife horizontally through to create some slits in the onion. And then I'm gonna turn the onion towards me and run vertically through, just like this. So now, if you were to open this up, you would have kind of like a blooming onion like they do at um, Outback Steakhouse. And then I'm gonna run my knife horizontally through once again. And the closer you make these cuts, the smaller your pieces of onion are going to be. 
Do you have any tricks on helping your eyes not water? Yes. So, oh my gosh, my friend just told me a really great, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my fire on back here. Um, my friend just told me a great trick. She put her onion in the freezer for 10 minutes and then cut it and she said it made it amazing. At this point, I'm pretty immune to the smell of onions. It has to be a really, really strong onion for me to wanna like tear up. But putting it in the freezer, running under cold water, a peeled onion under cold water, and um, holding a piece of bread in your mouth is helpful. Question? Um, the row chapter has got a lot of the comments. Janine said, you're going hella fast. <laughs> and uh, Chantel said, loving all the extra tips. And Cassandra, uh, Cassada, see girl, uh, whatever. Uh, wow, just learned how to dice some onions. Yay, I'm glad that you learned that today. It's Janine, like such Janine, an easy way to, once you get a hang of it, you just have to control your knife. You control your knife, not the knife that controls you. And just like be forceful. And having a sharp knife actually really helps as well. And Janine, shall I go S slower? Yes, Steph, Steph says she's trying to watch. Slow down. <laughs> You're going too fast. You're too fast. <laughs> all right. We're not all trained chefs. So, well, we're home is, chefs. I'm, I'm helping you guys out. But yes, I will. Steph slow. says she's still getting the tomatoes ready. <laughs> You're on step 16. Okay, let's review the steps since I'm going a little too fast. So far, we have um, our liquid getting hot and boiling for our grits. We have our tomatoes roasting in the oven. And I just diced an onion that we will be putting in this pan that's heating up. And it's important that your pan is hot before you put the onion in because you do want that caramelization to happen when the onion hits the pan, which is the color. And not only is it color, it is flavor. So you're building the depth of flavor as soon as you put your onion in your hot skillet. Question. Um, Ashley, Charles' wife, said that you look very pretty. Um, Renita said, yeah, because I got to clean my shrimp. And then, yes, for us non-cookers, for Casada girl. Uh, Z Santiago said, shout out to the cameraman. That would be me. <laughs> Louisiana favorite. I cooked shrimp and grits the other night. He, he, Robert and Leah Ford. Oh, you nice. So glad today. I heard so many people have cooked shrimp and grits during this week off. Um, let me know. Also, this is a good opportunity while I'm waiting, you know. Um, let me know what you guys have in your pantry that you just, like, bought entirely too much of. And maybe we can make a real-life cooking episode out of that. And I will be excited to na announce this week my Chef Lean hotline. I will be announcing this on Monday. And any questions you have, culina like culinary or otherwise, not really otherwise, culinary, let's stick to culinary questions. Um, say you're at home and have a certain amount of ingredients, you don't know what to do with them, you're tired of your cooking, you'll be able to text that num this number and I will give you an idea for what to make. Um, J. Non Bless said, I need that too. I think she's thinking about your brim scraper. Uh, it's pronounced Canada Cali Girl, LOL. Oh, I will make oh, this tomorrow. Oh, that's Ife. Oh, there you go. Ife said she was gonna cook along. But then I sent her the menu, and she was like, well, I'm allergic to shrimp, and I don't have grits. So I was like, maybe not the menu for you, girl. Um, and but appreciate the support. Bossy Chick Foodie said, okay, I will make this tomorrow. Um, someone said they have pasta and toilet paper. What can you make with that? Mm, you can make a really nice Christmas ornament, maybe. <laughs> um, Ashley said, this is a great idea. Looking like a snack chef, me. Riley Camacho said, Reese said, why aren't you talking to him? Reese? Oh, hey, Reese. How are you doing over there? I saw you got excited when I won Chopped the other night for the 18th time on TV. Uh, yo, I, yo, I have way too many black beans and I'm out of ideas. Black beans, black bean burgers, black bean soup. Okay. You can make black bean puree, quesadillas. Oh, and, and question, I, I want to make dessert with apples. Any ideas, chef? Yes. Well, my favorite thing to do with apples is just... That's how you want chopped with apples. Simply to bake them, yeah, with cinnamon and, and, and uh, sugar. Um, I'll, these are all great ideas. Feel free to email me at Kathleen at Chefleen, and I will uh, more thoroughly answer your question when I've had a little bit more time to think, not just right on the spot. But apples, favorite way, Hasselback apple, slice it really in like a bunch of different pieces, sprinkle cinnamon and sugar, and like oats on top, bake it in the oven, absolutely amazing with some ice cream. Hmm. Question? Are you sauteing the onions, gillops, axe? Yes, I am sauteing the onions that I diced. Okay. Um, and now I'm getting my garlic ready. So if you guys saw, I had, I'm not, why not be wild today? Let's add in three, three cloves of garlic. I'm not going out of the house. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> oh Chris doesn't look too happy about that. Don't worry, we're going to cook the garlic down so it's going to lose a lot of its super pungent flavor. So to peel the garlic, I find the easiest way for me is to take off the top 
and then kind of like hold your knife down so it peels back and then take off the bottom and then it kind of does the same thing again. Now I am going to slice my garlic cloves um, because I think it looks pretty. Uh, but you can, if you are not a fan of like having big pieces of garlic, you can also dice it very smallly, or very smallly, very small. Or you can use my favorite tool, if you happen to have one, the microplane, to make a nice paste of garlic. Alright, so I'm going to slice my garlic. So shrimp and grits is actually, well not, not shrimp necessarily, but grits are actually of Native American origin. Um, this tribe in the southeast of America, Mus Muscogee, um, they actually were the ones that introduced it to um, the people that came and took over their land. Good question. Oh, you're going to finish it? Go ahead. Oh, they, um, they actually introduced it to the people that uh, took over their land. And corn, actually, at one time in our nation was a used as a form of currency. Um, so they actually would stone grind their uh, corn, which corn we're all used to like the just yellow corn we get in the store. Corn comes in so many different varieties and more so in the past than it does now. It comes in a lot of different varieties. And um, so they would take their specific variety of corn and actually grind it um, with uh, stones and they would make these grits. And then they would sell them and use them and eat them. And not Maybe not cook them with cream, but cook them with water to make grits. Question? Uh, Co258 said, I was waiting to see uh, when you were going to provide us with a recipe. A recipe. And I told her Chef Lean doesn't believe in recipes. Um, Soka and Veggie said, cook off, are you down? Um, and a Canada Cali girl said, my husband buy Carly clothes, but I don't know what to do with them, so this is great. Um, awesome, guys. Uh, yeah, let's have a live, live stream cook off, but I don't know who would be the judge. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that tastes. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so good. This is the first food that was the same. All right, I want to show you guys these onions. Um, they have some nice color to them, which again, color is flavor, so that's good. But you don't want to burn them, so keep an eye on them, but you don't need to stir them constantly. I'm going to add in my garlic now. The reason you add in your garlic after your onions is because onions have more moisture than garlic, and your garlic will be less likely to burn. And maybe you're used to eating burnt garlic, but it's like one of the faux pas of like chefs is having burnt garlic. It's like a really bitter taste. Um, but maybe you're used to it and you know you don't mind it. But this is a good tip to not burn your garlic. Question? Uh, Dean Wakefield said, I miss your stuffed jalapeno peppers also, and I miss you. Oh, hey, Dean. And hey from Andrea and Stephen Papermaster. They always have, they have the best last name. Hey, guys. Paper they do, masters. they do have the best, they do have the best last name. All right. Um, so my cream and water mixture is boiling. And you want to always be careful when you're boiling anything like creamy, like milk because it'll boil up over and make create a giant mess. Raise your hand if this happened to you. Definitely happened to me several times. Um, so let's talk about our grits here. So I don't, I'm gonna lower it down while I'm talking to you guys. So grits have a few different varieties. They are, there's, um, there are stone ground grits, which are like the ones that the Native Americans made. Um, there are quick grits and there are instant grits. Um, Stone ground are a little hard to find and they take a pretty long time to cook. Uh, and quick grits probably take, so stone ground, stone ground can take 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and you kind of have to watch it and constantly stir and keep adding liquid, which grit purists, or like most people probably from the South, are like a true fan of those. This show, however, is called Real Life Cooking. So we don't have time. Well, now, actually, you know what? Now we all have time to stir grits for 30 or 40 minutes. But uh, in real life, when we're going outside in our day-to-day -day lives, I would definitely recommend using um, quick grits that take five to 10 minutes, depending on the manufacturer. But I would never really ever recommend instant grits because those are grits that are pre-cooked and then dehydrated. So like if you tell like a grit purist uh, that you're using quick or instant grits, they'll probably like just side eye you all the way. But you know, as long as you're cooking, I'm happy. So. Whatever you feel comfortable with or whatever you were able to find in the store uh, will work for now. I actually, question? Uh, were you supposed to put oil in the skillet? Yes. Oh. Really need a fed? I need to turn. Uh oh. Are you going to have a poopa? A, a poopa? <laughs> a poopa? I have not made a poopa, guys. Um, okay, so my onions and garlic. Yes, 
Sorry, Renita. Yes, I put oil in the pan. Um, about a tablespoon or so. Just enough to, like, coat the bottom. So my onions have some really good color on them. And they smell amazing. Um, so before I keep talking about grits, such an exciting topic, I'm going to put in my crushed tomatoes. Let me put these in because I don't want my onions to burn. All right, so as I talk about these, now I'm going to also lower the heat okay. and stir it around so everything's kind of incorporated. David John said, what type of oil? Uh, you can use olive oil. You could use butter if you wanted. All right. So now, literally, our sauce is kind of basically done. <laughs> kind of basically done. <laughs> kind of basically done. So, canned tomatoes, um, to get the true flavor of the, like, the depth of flavor and not, like, the acidic quality, you kind of want to cook them for a good amount of time or and really let those flavors meld together. Or you add sugar, right? Or you can add sugar. Um, but I'm going to let oh, yeah. this go for as long as, you know, as long as I'm talking to you guys. And then um, I'll taste it and I'll see how I feel about it uh, towards the end. So if you don't have canned tomatoes, which you should, canned tomatoes are a great pantry staple because they have, uh, you can put them, you can use them for all kinds of different cuisines, stews and soups pasta, sauces like this, um, definitely a really good pantry item to have on hand. But if you don't have them, you could use just the Simply Roasted Tomatoes like we have, or if you have, oh, I'm using my tomato sauce to prop up my phone, but if you've seen um, tomato sauce, uh, like it's literally just sauce, uh, you would want to use about a fourth, like less than the can because that doesn't tend to have the best flavor and you'll need to probably doctor it up a little bit more. But Renita, I believe in you. Um, so I, can, I think you got that tomato sauce. Can, for the people that are cooking along, can you go over your last couple steps and can you also tell them what you're making? Yes. Today we're making shrimp and grits. And so what we've done so far is we have some tomatoes, whole roasted tomatoes in the, uh, or whole tomatoes roasting in the oven. We have some milk and water, heavy cream and water boiling in the back. And we sauteed garlic and onions and we added our canned tomatoes into it. Um, I, as you can see, or maybe you can't see, these are crushed tomatoes, but diced tomatoes will work. I actually am really pleasantly surprised when you use the diced tomatoes with green chilies in them already. That gives a nice little kick of heat. Um, also, I find it better than like having to buy a whole jalapeno and then um, dicing that up and then it goes bad in the fridge. Um, so yeah, the, the cans of chilies, the tomatoes with chilies are really, really good. Question? Uh, Vanessa's clearly having a party over there. All she got is wine. <laughs> Uh, how much is less than a, than the can, Renita asks. Like half the can, Renita. Like half the can. And Vanessa, Vanessa they said you're winning. Uh, Vanessa's the, clearly the, the star of the show. What are her wine? Vanessa is the star of the show, Listen, always. I'll, I'll be surprised if everybody else doesn't have one. <laughs> All right, so I started defrosting my shrimp like at the beginning of the show, and they're already defrosted. So very, very easy to do. Um, it's how restaurants do it, even though I was really, it was really funny. When I was looking at this bag of shrimp, and I was like thinking about how I was going to explain how easy it is to defrost shrimp, literally on the bag it says, do not force thaw under run running water. But restaurants do that all the time. Um, question? Uh, Janine said, did you add any seasonings yet? I added in my, I added salt. That's all mm, I added. Just salt, but, Janine. <laughs> good point, Janine. We want to add in yeah. our seafood or Cajun seasoning. Um, today I'm going to be using Magic se 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 Seasoning Blend, and it would not be the Koi household without some Old Bay. Yes, ma'am. So these are my go-to whenever making shrimp and grits. Um, not necessarily the brand, but like a Creole-type seasoning. Um, and then Old Bay always adds just like that pinch of perfection if you're from Maryland. So you want to add in, I would say, I, you guys, I'm so sorry, I never measure. I feel like you could, should cook from your heart. Um, so I'm going to add in probably, I would say, about a teaspoon if it makes you happy to measure. Put a teaspoon in of each, and then, actually no, put in a tablespoon of your Creole seasoning, stir it around and taste it. If you like it, stop. If you want more seasoning, continue to add seasoning. No one's going to stop you, and it's supposed to taste good to you. Question. Cindy Early on Facebook asks, have you ever smoked garlic? Do you think that, have you ever used, you ever used smoked garlic? Do you think that that would change the flavor a lot? Smoked garlic? Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever used smoked garlic, but it would definitely 
change the flavor, but I think it would be good. It would add like a nice smoky background to it. Yeah, Maryland's, for sure. get, Maryland's getting a lot of love in your comments because Old Bay is amazing. <laughs> old Bay, the old secret recipe of Bay. Mm -hmm. All right, as of, before I keep talking about everything else, I need to start cooking my grits because honestly, I don't even know what kind of grits these are. <laughs> And I think that they are, it actually might be um, cornmeal, which is essentially the same thing. It's corn, it's ground corn, which is what grits are. Um, but these actually, these might be grits. That's why it's essential to label the things you put away in random containers. <laughs> um, but I don't know how long they're gonna take, so I wanna get them started so I can be eating soon. Question? Uh, stuff that add seasoning to the tomatoes. Yes. Add, add your tomatoes. seasoning to the tomatoes. All right, so this is important, so I'm going to bring it over here and hopefully I don't melt my cutting board. When you add in your grits, you don't want to just dump them in. You want to kind of sprinkle them around so they don't clump up, and you kind of want to like whisk them in so they don't clump up. As a kid, I ate cream of wheat, which is um, a form of grit, I guess. Did anyone else? Did you eat cream of wheat? No. That's <laughs> That's why? for white people. Why are you? Why are you? Um, oh, sorry, white people. <laughs> Black people like grits. It's basically the same thing, except for cream of wheat is a little thinner. Um, but I used to really, I'm a texture person, so I actually used to really like the lumps in my cream of wheat. I was like, mom, like pour it in fast, mom, pour it in fast. That could be having like the lumps in it. But anyway, so now that our grits are in our liquid, oh, we want to season our liquid. Oh no, cream of wheat's getting all the, all the love. Oh, cream of wheat is amazing. You are wrong. With butter and sugar. Butter, sugar, maple syrup, what brown Chris sugar. <laughs> Lee Robert Lee said, what Chris <laughs> Um, And then, so now that our grits are in our liquid, we do kind of have to keep an eye on them. Um, what's It's kind of like pasta. The grits are going to start to absorb that liquid, and we're going to need to stir it from time to time. Um, if you're in a hurry, you could turn your heat on high and constantly stir. Um, if we're not so much in a hurry. Um, so I'm gonna keep it on like a medium heat and like just check on, check in on it every few minutes or so. Question? Um, how many grits are you adding? <laughs> so <laughs> you're gonna add individual grits, grits? Grits are, I added 1,232,000 <laughs> grits. Um, I added one cup of grits to four cups of water. That's generally the good a good ratio when you're thinking about grits. All right, oh yeah, see look, they're starting to get thick back here. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I also want to stir my tomatoes. If you have a lid for your um, vessel that you're cooking in, you can put a lid on it uh, at the moment. My, um, my, my mom chimed in and said that I did eat grits or cream of wheat when I was younger, but grits are cheaper. So that's probably why they're stable. In the oh yeah, like. grits, that would make sense that grits are cheaper because they are not ground as fine. So like the harder, the further they have to grind them, the more expensive they would be. Well, I didn't even know I like eat cream of wheat. I didn't even know that. All Thanks, right. <laughs> All right, so back to our conversation about shrimp. Speaking of things, so when we're eating at home all the time, um, dinner can get a little boring, and seafood doesn't really seem like so much of an option because you don't want to buy tons and tons of seafood. Um, and I personally am not like a huge fan of frozen fish. I'm not actually a huge fan of fish in general, but <laughs> frozen fish particularly because it gets really waterlogged. It's really hard to get a sear. It's hard to impart flavor unless you're putting a ton of like sauces and butters. And I'm really like a purist when it comes to fish. But frozen shrimp are one of my favorite things because the integrity of the shrimp is not lost at all when it's frozen. Um, a couple things you want to look out for is you want to buy shrimp that are IQF, which are individually quick frozen. Um, and honestly, frozen shrimp are a little bit better than fresh shrimp because you're never, unless you live right by the ocean, or not the ocean, by like a gulf or something, you're never really getting fresh shrimp. They're always frozen and then they're just defrosted when they put in front of you and they look fresh. Question? Um, Janine is asking about seasoning for the grits. Did you add some salt? I added add salt. Yes, okay. salt to the grits. And so, Janine how I cook? down for the seasoning. Seasoning, Janine. She needs Janine. <laughs> she needs yes, the thank seasoning. you, Janine, for pointing that out. Um, yeah, seasonings are very important. For grits, uh, I like to cook them in salt, of course, and the, like the liquid. But I like to season them at the end because you're the grits are going to absorb so much liquid that no matter how much you season, like you're always going to have to season at the end anyway. So. And we're gonna season at the end with butter and cheese and everything delicious. IQF, you said? IQF are individually quick frozen. Where is that on the back? That's a good question. 
I think down, I've seen it, oh, this bag doesn't even say it. But you'll know they're individually cooked frozen if each little shrimp has like ice around it itself. Good. I don't know if you can see that, let me bring it up. Each one has like its own, no, you can't see that, sorry guys. But each, each one has its own little ice, ice uh, place. Um, also, size of shrimp, just FYI, maybe you've seen like shrimp that are 10 to 15, that actually means how many you get per pound. So this bag of shrimp is 21 to 25. So for this two bag, or I think this is two pounds of shrimp, um, we should have about 40 to 50 shrimp in here. What, um, what, what is the tomato sauce doing right now? It's just sitting there? The tomato sauce is simmering. Okay, it's simmering. It's building it's flavors. Simmering. Okay, okay. Um, additions to this, if you wanted to amp up the flavor. Oh wait, let me put my shrimp away so we have them for later. Um, if you want, if you wanted to amp up the flavor, remember, remember, don't forget to stir your grits because they will become a big glob of nothingness and not delicious. So keep stirring. Um, again, I'm trying to keep these meals very, very simple with things you can find in your pantry. Um, if you wanted to amp up the flavor, well, we actually have these things in our pantry, but you could use hot sauce. Um, Worcestershire sauce is always a nice little addition. Um, sugar, as Chris said, if you taste it and it tastes just a little too acidic for you, Add a little bit of sugar. And this is for the tomato sauce, correct? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, random question. You said what temperature for the apples? Oh, the, the apples? Um, the Hasselback apples I was talking about? Like 400. Um, okay, I want to just show you the grits. So when I put them in here, they were liquidy, and now they're starting to get thick and starting to absorb the water um, and heavy cream that we have in here. Uh, just beware that you're probably gonna have to add in more water, but grits are all about your own texture preference. So, actually, let me taste these now. Renita, Renita wants to know, well, David kind of answered it. Tomato sauce was looking kind of thick. She said, uh, David said add water. Yeah, add water. Or if you have the seafood stock, that would be the place to use it. There we go. So I'm tasting my grits now, and they're still really gritty. Mm. So like, it's like sand is in my mouth. So they're not done. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put them back but, Janine, the seasoning is on point. You could taste that salt for sure. All right. Question. I'm going to check on my um, roasting, tomatoes. roasting tomatoes. They've been in there, what, like 30 minutes or so? Oh, uh, uh, listen, I don't, mm -mm, I don't remember. You don't remember? No. TT, come I'm back. I'm not TT. I don't know. <laughs> um, again, yeah, if your sauce seems too thick, add in some water. Yeah, that's, yeah, them things look done, done. What done? Them. That's what we want. We want so this you might in regular life you might think this looks burnt, but in roasting life, this is perfectly amazing deliciousness. Mm. We're not gonna eat the crispy burnt part on the bottom. So you would say about twenty five minutes in the oven? Yeah. Okay. So let so let the guys know. Step so up. we roasted our we just put our whole baby tomatoes on a roasting sheet. Um twenty five minutes. We season them with salt, garlic powder, and olive oil. And they came out looking like this. And we're gonna fold this in at the end. Did you make uh, this shrimp and grits for lovers and friends? Lovers and friends, but did you like thickness? Poppington. Poppington. You want to add in some more water or liquid, whatever you're using. Just add in a little bit more. Remember when Medea said you play grit ball? Grit ball. What's that? <laughs> oh, there was this the, one of these movies she was in. Uh, she was talking about how this man was cheating on her. And she said, cook for them. Get them a big old pot of grits. And right when they're about to boil, throw them on it. That's a run. Oh my God, that door. sounds horrible. Yeah, he was cheating on her. So she went, God. Hot grits on it. Oh, let me turn off my oven because I don't need that yeah, anymore. Just, uh, I think. All right, my grits are starting to stick to the sides of the pans, but no worries there. I'm just going to continue to add some more liquid and continue to stir. So yeah, you did make them in Martha's Vineyard. They were. Oh, I did make shrimp and grits in Martha's Vineyard. Yes. Um, all right. So there's a couple of things, a couple of ways you can cook your shrimp when you're making shrimp and grits. You can sear them off first, um, which I'm not gonna do because we already started our sauce, our shrimp are frozen, and in the aspect of time, I just got the sauce started. So what I'm gonna do, or what you're gonna do if you're cooking with me, is just go ahead and season your shrimp and then we're gonna poach them in our sauce later. So we don't wanna put our sauce we don't want to put our shrimp directly into our sauce without any seasoning at all because that's setting us up for failure. So we want to season these just like as if they were going to be by themselves. So a good amount of salt. 
Of course, Ke of course, Keith yeah. just said. Uh, is there a vegan version without shrimp and grits? Without shrimp, you can make the sauce and grits if you're like vegan or vegetarian and you're used to not eating like meat. She said, "I want veggies though." Um, she can add veggies. You can have whatever vegetables you want. You can have. Uh, let me think of a good one. So I think like squash or eggplant, not really eggplant, Renita but I don't said, really like eggplant. Renita said, Kat, MJ spilled the rest of the tomato sauce all over the kitchen. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you on that one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right, so I'm seasoning my shrimp with Old Bay. Oh yes. And I'm just gonna move them, toss them around. I can't eat shrimp. So zucchini. Try zucchini. Yeah, try something different, Kiana. Or, um, well, I don't know what else would be good. Or, you know, you can make the sauce and so, slice up bell peppers, like in long thins, like kind of like fajita style, and then incorporate them into the sauce as well. All right, what am I gonna do now, guys? I'm going to taste my sauce because I need to know where I'm at on this. Mm. My sauce also looks a little thick, so I'm gonna add in some water. Mm. There you go. If you guys have any culinary questions, um, please drop them in the box below. Chris will relay them to me. Renita said you have, you can come clean. Mm, nah. <laughs> How's it taste? It still tastes a little bit, I mean, I like it, but it tastes a little bit acidic for Chris, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to add in some water because it's getting a little too thick. How so. do you know that it's getting too thick because it's on the side of the pan? Um, yeah, the way the way your mixture bubbles tells you how thick it is or not. Like if it's like plopping, then it's kind of too thick. Janine said monk fruit is a good fake shrimp. Oh, monk fruit. Good monk fruit Janine. or jackfruit? Monk fruit? Jackfruit. I've never heard of jack's monk. Well, actually I've heard of monk sugar, which is a good sugar replacement. Mm -hmm. But I've never heard of monk fruit. Or, oh, you know what they use at, there's a vegan place around the corner for me, and they use um, burdock root, and they make like a actually kind of delicious crawfish sandwich, and it tastes like crawfish. It's very strange. Mm -hmm. But I personally have never done that. All right, so this is the part where you're just kind of like standing here and watching over your ingredients. Can you um, bring the sauce up closer if people want to see it? Oh. Oh, Jack, she said, oh yeah, she meant Jack. Jack fruit, fruit yeah. All right, Janine, Janine, I'm going to show you guys the sauce. So we have our onions, our tomatoes. It's not like plop, it still drips. It's not plopping. Here you guys go, Facebook. She was thinking of monkfish as fake So I stuff. also, your sauce is going to be, um, depending on the kind of tomatoes you use, that is going to determine the thickness of your sauce. If you use just diced tomatoes, your sauce will probably be not as thick. Um, I use crushed tomatoes, which is a little more saucy, so my sauce is going to be thicker. Um, if you use tomato sauce, your sauce should be pretty, well, like thinner than ours. Um, oh, we don't have any Worcestershire sauce. That makes me sad. Worcestershire sauce is like one of my favorite things to add. How do you say it? Worcestershire. Worcestershire? Yeah. How else would you say it? Worcestershire? I, Worcestershire, maybe. Yeah, no, no. Worcestershire. Worcestershire mm -hmm. sauce. I'm going to have to Google it. <laughs> Worcestershire. Uh, um, so some other variations of shrimp and grits also call in for adding bacon in the background and then crispy on top. You can add in, and how you would do that version is um, cook your bacon. I would actually cook my bacon in the oven and then use the bacon grease to sear off your shrimp and then start creating the sauce like we did Ooh, today. That sounds good. And then good. you could crumble the bacon on top at the end. Um, you can add in jalapenos, either fresh or canned variety. Again, they sell this really amazing thing that's tomatoes with diced chilies in it. That would be pretty good. I just used that for something else. What? Oh, I used it, yes, I made stuffed peppers and I made that with turkey meat and that was really good. Um, also, I'm just sitting here stirring my grits because they were starting to stick and that was making me sad. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure that they're not sticking. That sounds amazing. Chef's name for president. <laughs> You're better than the current one. I mean, anyone. Anyone is better. All right. So, Kathleen, how has um, your chef world been impacted by the coronavirus? Um, my chef world, uh, the coronavirus has really brought a damper to my chef life. Um, I work in people's homes. So, yes. as you can imagine, people are pretty afraid to have, like, people in their house. Um, also, I work not so close to my house in many different homes. So I'm also, a, like, I'm not trying to ride on the subway or spend a lot of money on Ubers just to get to work. 
Um, so I have literally not really been working except for here in the house. Um, I've been thinking of ways to uh, create content or you know thinking about the future. Um, but I am not the only one impacted. Like I really really feel for the people in restaurants. All our restaurants are closed, and a lot of those people. Um, like I used to be a server, so I know the restaurant life. Like it is get rich in the week and spend all your money on the weekend. So I definitely totally feel really sad for people that work in restaurants or people that have those kind of like jobs that just like living day to day, every single day is like a new day. Um, because now in these climates, like we don't really know what the next day is going to bring. So it's kind of upsetting, but I'm thankful that I have food to eat. Uh, I'm thankful that I have group chats, <laughs> thankful that I have Christopher, and we should all be really thankful for the internet because uh, the internet is undefeated at this point, point. Um, and it's keeping us entertained. Um, Chelsea says you still haven't put the shrimp in the sauce yet, right? No, I haven't put the shrimp in the sauce. So, adding the shrimp to the sauce is going to be the very, very last step because once the shrimp are in the sauce, we're done, and we do not want to overcook our shrimp. I think that's a lot of times um, why people like my particular version of shrimp and grits is because the shrimp are really well cooked. And um, the way you do that is... Get your own horn, why don't you? <laughs> Good job, Kathleen. Um, so uh, the way you do that is just by adding them at the end right before you're about to eat them. Oh, see, my, our grits are starting to spit at us again, so that means we're losing... That's a good thing? Well, it means that you're almost down to like the liquid, like you might have to add more liquid in. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show you my consistency. Again, if you were here at the beginning or towards the beginning and you heard me, I honestly don't even know what kind of grits these are. So this is an experiment. I think it's like cornmeal. Oh, I was wondering why they were yellow and not white. Are oh. grits supposed to be white? Yeah, cause so yes and no. It depends on the variety of corn, but we- My baby said he used to make white, uh, <laughs> white grits for me well no for sure um because americans they like to package things a certain way for us all the single time so we become used to the way that we're eating things but corn as i said in the beginning comes in <laughs> so many different varieties <laughs> and we are just used to eating the same thing all the time all right let me taste these so they're not crunchy anymore they don't feel like sand in my mouth but it's still a little bit too textured for me to enjoy it. So I'm gonna put it back on the flame. And again, put some more liquid in because it was getting a little too. All right. Can we go over all of the steps one more time for the people that were behind? For the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, do not discourage by telling them that they're taking too I'm long. kidding, guys, I'm kidding. All right, go ahead. All right, well, let me just make sure my grits are situated back here. Mm -hmm. Looks like you're gonna probably need to add some more salt. No, they're, they're actually pretty salty. Oh, okay. okay, so we are making shrimp and grits. We started off by boiling our water and milk or cream or whatever you're using stock four parts to one part for making grits. Um, and then we roasted some tomatoes. This is optional, but it adds a nice freshness to the dish. Freshness to the dish. Mm -hmm. And it adds like some nice textural and just a visually pleasing element. Then we got started on our sauce which we sauteed garlic and onions um, with a little bit of olive oil or butter, your choice. Um, and then we let those get a nice brown color, season them with salt, add it in our canned tomatoes. Um, you can use crush, you can use dice, you can use chilies if you want, or canned with chilies. You can use sauce, but it's gonna be, all of those things are just gonna be different. They're not gonna, not one is better or worse. You might have a preference for one you like better if you play around with it, but they're all, they all work. Um, and then we're just kind of letting the tomatoes reduce down and build up in flavor and become a little less acidic than they are. Um, add-ins that you can add in. Oh, we also season after you put in our tomatoes with our Creole seasoning and our Old Bay in this house, of course. Um, but totally optional. Um, some other things you can add to make your sauce have a little bit more depth of flavor are is sugar. Um, be careful when you're adding in sugar but it does help the tomatoes get that like more well-rounded flavor. Mm -hmm. And you can add in Worcestershire sauce and you can add in hot sauce if you like things spicy. You could also add in um, some hot pepper flakes if you like. Also, um, at the beginning, if you like vegetables or maybe you don't want shrimp, you could, after you do your garlic and onions, you could use bell peppers 
um, or celery in your sauce as well. But I was keeping it nice and simple for us today. Mm -hmm. Any questions? <laughs> mm -hmm. So now we're basically just waiting for our grits to finish cooking. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to season up our grits with butter and cheese. Um, now, back in the olden days, when grits were first a thing with the Native Americans, they didn't use cheese in them. Um, grits actually became really popular in America, besides like the southern places, the southeast, <laughs> is, um, in 1985, when this man named Craig Clegborn wrote about the shrimp and grits he had at this restaurant, Crook's Corner, um, and then it kind of exploded. That's like when you started to see shrimp and grits in all kinds of different restaurants all over the nation. Um, this guy, Bill Neal, was the chef that actually created it, and he was the, maybe not the first, but the first person to get acclaim um, that added cheese to the grits. Mm. So, what type of cheese are you gonna add? Oh, that's a good question. So, typically, typically <laughs> I, okay, I like Parmesan cheese because it has a nice sharpness to it and it kind of balances the uh, tomato sauce. It's kind of like you know very Italian too. The flavors that obviously they pair well together. Um, I also really like goat cheese because it adds a nice creaminess to it. Um, if you've seen, I did an episode actually on shrimp and grits. Well, a verge variation of shrimp and grits. It was shrimp a la Diabla and pumpkin grits. I think it was two years ago or a year ago. No, I think it was this year. Um, and that was really amazing. You can actually check it out on my website if you have a random can of pumpkin and you want to try a different kind of grit. Um, that was really it. And so we used pumpkin and goat cheese in there. Um, but literally any kind of cheese you can use is, or whatever kind of cheese you like, is perfectly fine. You can put cheddar? Yeah, white cheddar, yellow cheddar. Um, Steph, I know, is using the Mexican blend that you get in. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, I'm really about, like, cooking with what you have. Like, there's, especially in these times, um, you don't want to have to go out to the store just because you don't have, like, one random ingredient which is another reason why I'm gonna start up the hotline because I want you guys to cook at home, I want you to feel encouraged, and I don't want you to think that you need every single thing in a recipe to make your recipe taste good. You guys have some hotline bling? Hotline bling, yep. Yeah. Wait for the promo on Monday, I'm very excited. I'm gonna put the song in there. Oh my god. <laughs> Those dance moves. What? You guys don't like my dance moves? No. You guys should have seen our dance party last night. We, moved the, we had we had a whole party in the living room, strobe light and everything. It was amazing. On FaceTime. We were on FaceTime from 1.30 till 12 o'clock at night. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. We went to a day party, we went to a brunch, we went to a night party. Then we got dressed. We got dressed, we put on heels. Well, I put on heels. <laughs> Chris did not put on heels. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to show you guys my sauce right here oh, that looks good. it's looking good i actually like my sauce to be a little thick um so now i'm gonna add in my seasoned shrimp what's a good green Remember? side for this meal a good side a good green side um salad <laughs> so are you gonna turn the heat back up when you put the shrimp in or no 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 i am actually gonna turn the, sh the heat down oh. because the key to cooking shrimp is not to make them super hot, like to gently, gently cook them. Ease them into their cooked process. Do not force them into their cooked process. Because when you force them, that is when they, the proteins tighten and your shrimp will be a little bit more tough. So actually, as I said that, let me turn this down. Okay. Um, and this would be a great time if you had a lid to just go ahead. If you had a lid, actually, I would just turn the heat all the way off and put the shrimp in and just kind of let them sit there until they're cooked. Okay. Um, so, Drew said morning we're up, Brittany said Poppington, uh, Nikki said thank you for saying that, I always feel like I have to buy everything for the recipe, um, and Mr. David John said a little thickness ain't never hurt anyone. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that's why they're in the south, because they're definitely, uh, <laughs> um, oh, that's what I wanted to talk about guys, so we talked about how the Native Americans gave us their whole country. And, and the grits included. Um, but uh, the shrimp portion of shrimp and grits came about um, from the Gullah Geechee people in uh, Southeast again. I think mainly made, like in South Carolina, like down in that area. Mm -hmm. um, so these people were enslaved and um, sometimes they would be given grits, uh, you know, as like, you know, payment or whatever, or not even payment, but just like as sustenance. And down there, there's like wild shrimp 
rampant. So they would use their resources and catch shrimp and then use them with the grits and create, they created the breakfast dish of shrimp and grits. Mm -hmm. So that's my kind of cool history um, of being able to make something when you literally have nothing. And Drew, uh, this is actually TT on, on her Drew Burner account. <laughs> TT, I miss you. Yes, TT. I'm I'm reading everyone's comments, TT. You'll be very upset. <laughs> All right. I'm actually gonna switch because I'm again. Remember, I want my shrimp to be on a lower heat than because um, I don't want them to like tighten their proteins really fast and be not as tasty. Um, and then I move my grits to my higher burner back here. Okay. I'm just kind of stirring my shrimp around so they're cooking evenly. Again, anyone said hot, uh, any vegan shrimp substitute recommendations? Vegan shrimp substitute recommendations. What did um, you come up with earlier? Dragon fruit? Uh, no. Jackfruit? Jackfruit. Jackfruit. But you're not going to have like the shape of the shrimp. It's going to be more like kind of like pulled pork. Can you, Unless you can... Can you season jackfruit with Old Bay? Yeah, you can season... Jackfruit doesn't really have too much of a flavor, but it does have like the, the texture. texture. Mm, that's interesting. Um, and then my other suggestion was <laughs> if you... Burdock, this restaurant around the corner from me uses burdock to make crawf crawfish, yes. vegan crawfish. And that is probably the best textured like fake fish uh, I've ever tofu, had. Tofu, they said it's good. Oh, who said it's good? Uh, Miss Leah. Oh, tofu. It's very good. I'm not like a can giant I, fan of tofu. Also, if someone said, can I use rice if I don't have grits? Oh, that was TT. Yes. Um, if you don't have grits at home, a good thing to eat this with would be rice or potato, like mashed potatoes. Um, my friend I was talking to today, she only had sushi rice, mm -hmm. which I think actually would be pretty good because sushi rice is a lot more creamy than regular rice or like a risotto. Um, so you get that like balance of the creaminess versus the mm -hmm. like more acidic sauce. TT said, I was telling her that I'm reading everyone's comments, and she said not everyone deserves spotlight. <laughs> TT, we all deserve spotlight during these trying times. We all deserve the spotlight yes. in our own. And she said own. she doesn't have rice. She's just asking for a friend. Oh, yeah. So, and evidently Robert Ford does not like tofu either. Because <laughs> clearly by your facial expression, you're not a big fan of tofu either. Tofu's not my favorite thing. Um, oh, again, because I'm a texture person, so I needed to have like some texture about it. Oh, um, and your dad is on uh, this chat and said, hello guys, I see you guys are making the best of your time. Great food, great fun. Yes, um, because my grits were more like stone ground grits, I'm like over here really sweating up, a, like, this is hard. My arm hurts. Say, say hello to your dad. Hello, dad. <laughs> nice to see you. Acknowledge him. Everyone deserves acknowledgement. She said only for now, carry on. <laughs> She'll be back on the desk soon enough. All right, our um, grits are starting to get nice and thick. I'm gonna taste them again. <laughs> Gil said, can taste I them? use flaming hot Cheetos if I don't have any grits? You could, you know, your house. <laughs> your house, your rules. Ah, these grits are, did, these grits did, are flaming hot. Did, did we add cheese and butter yet? Mm -mm. No. Not yet, Steph. So once, but if you're using instant grits, your grits are probably done for sure, because mm -hmm. it takes like five minutes. But um, my grits are actually done now too. So this is the point. It's like very thick. I don't know if you guys can see how it's like bubbling. Ooh. It looks like kind of like how lava looks when it bubbles. Let me turn this off because I don't want my hair to catch on fire. So now this is the point. Whenever you get your grits to the consistency and the texture that you like, because remember you're cooking for yourself, um, is when you're gonna add in your butter and cheese. So, <laughs> We're only going to add in a little bit of butter. Whoa, <laughs> that's fine. And remember, you it's okay if your um, grits are a little thicker than you might like because once you add in the butter, it's really going to, um, it's going to loosen them up again. So we're going to mix in. I literally, I do use a stick of butter every single time I make grits because grits don't really taste like anything. <laughs> and butter is amazing. Oh my gosh. All right, so now we mix in our butter. We're gonna mix in our cheese. So I have cheese this. OMG. <laughs> I have this gigantic bag of Parmesan cheese from some catering event. So I'm. This is what I'm smell gonna it. use it tonight. Okay. Yeah, it smells fine. Oh, okay. This stuff like never goes bad. Oh, I'm gonna say I felt like it had a um, for a while. <laughs> it's not. This is not real Parmesan cheese. I have. I know I've said like Parmesan cheese is the best. Um, this is like a Parmesan cheese substitute, but it has the flavor of Parmesan cheese because Parmesan cheese can only come from a specific place in Italy, um, and I'm pretty sure they're probably not exporting right now. Oh, um, so Parmesan cheese to be... 
So this is, I was looking for the, I was looking for the goodbye date. Oh, this, I, I said this last forever. This has, we need to eat all of this by April 12th. <laughs> oh, um, now this is again a place where I'll give you a recommendation of how much to add. But if you like cheese, go wild. Add as much cheese as you want. Um, I would say for about the cup of grits that we used, you could add up like a half a cup is a good place to start. Um, which is kind of like the hand, my handful. But I, I'm like a cheese lover. Like, I, we have so many kinds of cheese in our fridge, it's kind of ridiculous. But butter is taking over. Everybody's talking about the butter, Kathleen. The stick of butter? Allison is so happy for it. OMG, all that butter. What did you season the grits with besides butter? Just salt. Just salt. Um, also, um, Cindy early said butter, butter makes everything better. If we're using rice, I'm guessing no butter or cheese. Also, we have a diet or dairy allergy over here. So it would be vegan cheese. Would we, would we, oh, be adding still, is that, is that still recommended for Chelsea? Um, you don't, the cheese is optional. You don't have to add the cheese. The butter, even if you don't use butter, um, you could use like margarine would be good. Um, yeah, cheese is completely optional. Again, back in the olden days, they didn't even use it. Um, and cheese, you might want to just top your dish with cheese. Well, you said you don't like cheese. But if you like cheese and you want to top, I would, instead of putting it in the dish, I would top your shrimp with oh, it. Oh, on top of the rice. That yes. Makes sense. On top of, yes, on top of your rice. Yeah. TT said, I mean, you already added a stick of butter. Treat yourself. Put all the cheese in there. <laughs> Treat yourself. Yeah, and you can get, <laughs> get really creative and add in, like, different kinds of cheeses. You know how people get really, like, excited about their mac and cheese blends? Make your own great cheese blend. Um... The only cheese I probably wouldn't put in here would maybe be um, like mozzarella because it's kind of like stringy and I don't, I just, yeah, it doesn't really, it wouldn't really do much. Chefling, you are trying to get all these people big so you can then get them to do a loser <laughs> challenge. No, no, no. Yes, yes. All right, so now you guys, it is time to plate up our dish. Let me know how you're doing if you're cooking along. Are you, are you basically done too? I hope so. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so. Our shrimp, how do we know they're cooked? They're more curly than before. It's hard to tell because so shrimp- Typically they're red, right? That yeah, shrimp turned pink, um, pink, but it's really hard to see through the tomato sauce, but they do like curl up a little bit and they get a little bit smaller. Um, so I'm gonna add in my tomatoes, my roasted tomatoes now to this. Oh, you don't add that? Would you add that? Huh? Would you add the roasted tomatoes? I'm gonna add them now. Oh. They don't really need to cook with it. It's more like for texture and garnish. And like, yeah. All right. Or if you wanted to save them and like plate them around your plate, you could do that too. Yeah, that's what I would think you're gonna do. That's what you would do. That's what I would do. That's what Chef Coy would do. I, I know I won the a thing yesterday. How many how many people voted for me? Oh yeah, we had a chef contest yesterday. I won by flying colors. What? <laughs> that's because you're. All right. Haters. So my to... grits are a little bit runny at the moment because I added in all that butter and it's still really hot. Steph, but as your grits cool, they will get a little more thick. For sure. Question? Uh, they're all caught up. Oh, great. Gil helped Steph use instant grits. It worked out perfectly. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna put my grits on the bottom and I'm gonna wipe away this uh, little... David, <laughs> David John said, who's hosting these virtual workouts to burn these carbs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Renita, that's Not like toma tomatoes in the oven. Oh no, your tomatoes. All right, so I'm, you know, the best part about cooking for yourself at home is that, like, if you go to a restaurant and you order shrimp and grits, like, that's how it's going to look, like, one little shrimp and all these grits. <laughs> oh, whatever, I'll send that back. <laughs> but literally, when you go to a restaurant, you get, like, what, maybe five shrimp, maybe if you're lucky. There's no TT2, oh, I'm going to get 10 shrimp. But at home, you can make it exactly how you want to eat it and give yourself a nice big portion let's get some of those tomatoes in there um on the recipe on the ingredient list i included parsley so if you wanted to be fancy um you could chop up some parts and if you have parsley you could chop it up and put it on there as well um but this is kind of perfect just the way it is our shrimp and grits here um does anyone would anyone like to that has made their dish like to join the live stream and show off your dish to us? Anyone, anyone? Anyone want to join the live stream and tell us to how much you love cooking so much? <laughs> that or the shrimp tails still be on them. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, I keep the shrimp tails on because I think it kind of looks pretty. But if you wanted to, you could take off the tails before um, you cook your shrimp. I would definitely do it before. Oh, Janine, Janine would like to chat. So we'd like to... Uh... Live? Yes. Add her in? All right. Oh, how do we How do we add her in? Uh, Janine has to request it. Janine oh. requests. So for those of you on Facebook, on Instagram Live, you can add in... Oh, my thing was disconnected. You can add in... Oh. It ended. No, it didn't. So did. Okay. You can add in. Uh, oh, okay, we're back in. She's got her send a request to her, to us now. This isn't working. It's on there. No. I don't know why. You're live now. You're now. Oh, live. there we go, guys. All right. So for those of you on Facebook, um, you can join in and Instagram live. So uh, Janine has been cooking along. And she would like to join in our Instagram on uh, Instagram live and she's gonna show us what she made and talk about her successes and hopefully not failures talk about her successes in creating this shrimp and grits dish tonight yes there you go where's she yeah, at you gotta send a request to chef Janine's live video when Janine gets back in here oh there's Janine all right Janine show us what you got request, join the live video request, yes. request the live how it's gonna slide up you'll see the request she scrolls up and she'll see it. You see it? Yep, send a request to be a chef video. Where? You see the request, she'll see it. Did she request it? No. Yep, so she'll, she'll slide up. Let me Sorry. know what you guys want to see in the future. Um, again, you can sign up for the newsletter list. Uh, go to my website, chefling.com. Don't forget to plug the hotline. Boom. And oh, here she goes. You can sign, yeah, you can um, sign up on the newsletter and you'll always get the list to your email and you don't even have to wait. Uh oh. All right, here comes Janine, guys. Let's bring you. Where'd you go? Oh, connecting. Hey, Janine. So look, guys, we have Janine here. Let's see, let's see what you created. Oh, yeah, look at that, guys. Janine has made an amazing, how's it taste? Turn up, turn up your phone. It looks edible. <laughs> it looks edible. Well, that's a good start. Looking good, looking edible is good. Oh wait, Reese really wanted to say hi. He helped us with just a teeny tiny bit. Oh hey Reese, what did you do? Hi. Hi. But oh, they can see him. Okay. <laughs> well, so Nick, Nikki really is asking, can you do this more than once a week? I love the seasoning of shrimp and grits. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, what, when's it going to come in? And it tastes so good. Good, good. You did a really good job. Okay, we well, did, you did all the work, so great job. you more than once a week, Nikki, yes. Because you're on. Oh, because I'm talking. Yes, you are on the Instagram Live. Welcome. Welcome to the party. All right. Look, we didn't even make like a crazy mess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys did a great job. I don't know what to do with the tomatoes, though. Oh, you put them in, you mix them in at the end. Okay, wait, okay. Well, Dad, Dad wants to take okay. over. We can, we can, uh, so we can listen to you for the rest. All right, <laughs> bye. <laughs> All right, guys. So, you see there is a success story. Nikki, um, you may be onto something with the more than once a week uh, because, again, there's nothing else to do. Uh, just kidding, guys. There's tons of things to do. Read a book, meditate. Clean your house, organize your kitchen, annoy Chris. You know, there's tons of things for me to do. <laughs> yes, uh, somebody else might want to join your live. Um, yeah, else? Does anyone else want to join the live before we go? Because I'm hungry. I'm <laughs> trying to eat. Mm -hmm. Anyone? In hey, Larry, what's up? All right. All right, guys. Well, I am signing off for the evening, but look out. Sign up for the email. Oh, here goes. Oh, here goes Kelly. Not a damn chef wants to uh, join the video. Uh oh. It's connecting. Chloe, guys. I think he made the meal. Chloe made the meal. Hey guys. Oh, we have a question. What is the question? What what wine pairs well with the shrimp and grits? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I know. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I would say um, a a white wine. Oh, look, no teeth. How are you gonna eat the shrimp and grits with no teeth, Chloe? <laughs> um, I would say Sauvignon Blanc or like a Pinot Grigio, something nice and crispy because it's a pretty heavy dish. Thank you for your question. 
right. Thanks, you guys, for your question. Perfect question. Bye, Chloe. <laughs> Say bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> I see. <laughs> what? Okay, awesome. Bye, thanks. Bye. All right, guys, thanks for your questions. Thanks for tuning in. Definitely look out for the emails. Um, let me know if you have any suggestions, and I will see you guys soon in the interweb spaces. Bye. Bye, Facebook.